Hey guys, and welcome to episode 10, yes you heard me right, episode 10 of Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. I cannot believe we've done 10 episodes of the show. It has been so much fun. And also, on a very exciting note, today we have our first ever Cooking with Remy sponsorship. Yay! So thank you guys for the support, and also thank you to Morningstar Farms for sponsoring this video and believing in Cooking with Remy. Also, today is very exciting because I've been asked since the beginning of Cooking with Remy from you guys to make vegetarian recipes. So today we are doing a breakfast, a snack, a lunch, and a dinner all vegetarian for you guys out there. And even if you're not vegetarian or plant-based or whatever, you should definitely try these because they are delicious and I honestly love how they make me feel. It tastes good. It's a win in my book. So on today's menu, for breakfast, we are making one of my absolute favorite fast food breakfast foods. I cannot name the restaurant nor what it's actually called, but we'll say it's like a crunchy wrap. Seriously, they are so good. And if you add any sort of breakfast ingredients to anything, I love it. Breakfast burgers, breakfast tacos, whatever. It just makes it so much better. So today we're doing a vegetarian breakfast crunchy wrap. For a snack, we're making caramel apple date bites. They are super easy to make and I promise you everyone will love them. For lunch, we're making an Asian style chicken salad. And for dinner, we are making a broccoli and cheese pasta, very similar to like maybe your favorite broccoli and cheddar soup, but add some pasta to it so you know it is going to be delicious. So that's what's on the menu today. And if you guys wanna learn how to make it, let's get cooking. Starting off with my favorite meal of the day, and quite possibly the most important, we have breakfast. Honestly, a lot of this is just prepping and then assembling, and we're going to begin by taking our large, these are burrito-sized tortillas. You can get grain-free, you can get flour, you can get whatever you'd like, but I'm just going to stack them on top of each other, and to give this its crunchiness, I'm also going to be adding a tostada inside. You can buy the pre-made, you can create your own by frying up a corn tortilla, but if you can see, well, this one's broken, BRB. As you can see, they are a disc shape like this, and basically we're just going to cut out the same size in our large tortilla, and miraculously, this bowl fits perfectly. So I'm just gonna go like this and just stamp out some circles in my tortillas. So you can press down if you'd like, but if your bowl's not that sharp, take a knife and just go around the edges. Pull off the excess, do not waste this. You can cut it and make it into little tortilla strips or something like that. We don't wanna waste the food. And then we are left with perfectly shaped little tortilla circles. Beautiful. Okay, now that our wrap is ready, I have everything that I'm gonna be putting inside the wrap. As with every Cooking with Rami recipe, feel free to change it up and switch it up with whatever you like. But today, I am using kind of the more classic wrap ingredients. First up here, we have my sausage patties, which these are from Morningstar Farms, obviously. These are the veggie original sausage patties. They taste so good, I promise you. I'm a huge fan of plant-based meat alternatives. I think they taste so good, especially when you get them extra crispy to prep these. I basically just put them on the skillet, a little bit of spray oil, cooked each side for like three to four minutes until they get really nice and crispy on the outside. They taste amazing and are a key component of today's breakfast just to give a little bit more protein and also just flavor. Also, they're great because they have such a variety of products. So if you want bacon, sausage links, sausage patties, whatever, they've got you covered and they are absolutely fantastic. So if you guys wanna check them out, look into your local freezer aisle. For other ingredients that I'm adding in, I have some shredded hash browns here that I just cooked up on the pan behind me. I love adding a nice crispiness with the sausage and with the hash browns. I also have some scrambled eggs already pre-made, as well as some cheddar cheese, and we're gonna get to assembling. For me personally, I like to chop up my veggie patties into little bite-sized pieces. A serving size for one of these patties is one patty. I'm gonna use about two for every one of my crunchy wraps just because I love the flavor that much. All right, so we're chopped into little bite-sized pieces and officially it's time to assemble. All right, to assemble, we are taking a large, it looks smaller on camera, I swear it's a massive tortilla. Again, this is a burrito size one and we're just gonna start layering right in the center of our tortilla. I'm gonna start with some cheese because this is gonna get nice and melted on the bottom. You can use vegan cheese, you can omit the cheese, but I'm just using regular cheddar cheese right here. Then we're gonna layer in our ingredients. I'm gonna add our potatoes and I am the queen of overstuffing things so I'm really trying to not do so today. But you want a nice even layer of all the ingredients on top of each other. Followed up with our scrambled egg. You can also add in like other veggies here if you wanna add in sauteed veggies, that sounds so good. And then I'm gonna top with our veggie patty. 
Again, I'm adding about two patties worth right there. For extra crispy crunchiness, I'm adding on the tostada. Again, you can make your own if you'd like, but I'm just using a store-bought one that makes it a little easier. And then we're gonna top with our circle of the flour tortilla that we cut, and now we're gonna wrap. So you're just going to fold over on top. If you can see, the one on top is just adding a barrier so that we can fry it properly. Fold over. And then you're just gonna pinch and keep folding, keep folding. These things are very malleable, so you wanna be careful that it doesn't break. It's a lot of hand motions. Keep folding. Okay, very carefully, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna put it onto an oil pan over medium heat and get a nice little sizzle going on this. I've got the little baby here. I've got my pan here going over medium heat and I have a little spray oil in there. And we're gonna put it seam side down to get it nice and locked in. Woo! Okay, we got her. I'm gonna let it crisp up for about two to three minutes, flip it over, let it cook on the other side for two to three minutes, and it's done. All right, our crunch wrap is done. It looks amazing, and please listen to this right now. It looks so good. I almost fell over, it's so good. Also just wanted to state, if you have a panini press, you can add it in there. It honestly is probably a little easier to get it flat, but as you can see, a pan works just as well. And now for the moment of truth, the slice. Oh my God. Here is our beautiful breakfast crunchy wrap. For some extra breakfast nutrition, you can add some avocado on top. You can put it inside, but I think warm avocado is so gross, so I like to serve it on top. Salsa, sour cream, whatever you like in the morning, and it is the perfect breakfast also to take on the go. If you wanna pre-make them, you can throw them in the freezer, and then in the morning, throw them in the toaster, the air fryer, grab it, and go on your way. So, a delicious vegetarian breakfast taste test. Oh my God. Seriously, it tastes better than the fast food ones and also are better for you, so it is a win-win and you should make this. Moving on to our little snack. This is really simple, really easy. I make variations of this all the time, but I figured why not make one of my favorite treats into something a little bit healthier, and that is caramel apples. We are gonna be making caramel apple date bites. All you need for this are just pitted dates. If you have never tried a date before, they taste like caramel. Their nickname is Nature's Candy for a reason. They are so good. I like buying the pre-pitted ones because I'm a lazy girl, and then I don't have to do anything, so these are great. For my apple, I'm using a Granny Smith because these are the perfect apple to use for a caramel apple because it's like tart, it goes with the sweetness. These are what they normally use in caramel apples at the fair or wherever you get it. And then any sort of toppings. I personally like my caramel apples when they're dipped in chocolate with chocolate chips, so that's what I'm doing today. But if you like peanut butter, M&Ms, Oreos, use whatever you like, you can dip it in at the end and you are good to go. And they literally take two minutes to make. So to begin, I've got my Granny Smith apple here and I'm just gonna chop up a little bit. We wanna finally chop this so we can stuff our dates with it. I'm basically only using like this much apple or so, and we are going to finely, finely chop this into little baby pieces. Now that our apple is finely chopped, we can assemble. I'm gonna start by taking one of my dates. Again, as I said, they're already pitted, so I just open it up, and I'm just gonna stuff it with some of our little apple pieces. Get her all nice and full, and then try to close it up a little bit. Dates are really sticky and malleable, so they can kind of move like that if you see. Then from there, I'm gonna dip mine in chocolate. You don't have to do this step, but I love chocolate and dates, so I want to. Just gonna put some chocolate right on top, just on top of the apple. It's also gonna harden and kind of enclose it. And then, my favorite part, I'm also gonna dip it in more chocolate chips, because why not? I'm just gonna place them on some parchment paper, and then we'll throw them in the fridge when we're done stuffing all the dates. All right, our caramel apple date bites are out of the fridge. You wanna put these in the fridge for at least an hour so the chocolate can set, but these are great to prep, and if you wanna just throw them in a Ziploc bag, keep them in the fridge for like a week or so if they last that long. They're the perfect sweet treat for any time of day, and I cannot wait to eat one right now. Mm-hmm. We all know the best part of a caramel apple is the caramel, so these are perfect because it's like so much caramel, little apple, and you feel great while eating one. I just spit, so sorry. They're so good. We're gonna begin by making our own miso dressing. This stuff is amazing. You can put it on a sock and I would eat it. So we've got a little bowl here and in the bowl, we're gonna start with one tablespoon of white miso paste. So here is our miso paste. It looks beautiful. You can mix this with hot water and make miso soup. I like to add it on top of my salmon before I bake it. It adds like a nice miso crust. It's umami, it's amazing. So I'm gonna start by taking a tablespoon of miso and add it to my bowl. There we go. Now to this, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of sesame oil, two teaspoons of soy sauce, 
To add a little acidic flavor, I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of rice vinegar, and you can eyeball all this. It, I promise you it'll always taste good. For some extra sweetness, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of honey. I love honey and miso and soy and all those flavors together. And last but not least, one clove of finely chopped garlic. You can add more if you'd like. I honestly might add more. <laughs> and from here, you can always adjust flavor. If you want it a little bit more salty, add a little bit more soy. If you want it more sweet, add some more honey. If you want a little more tart, add some more rice vinegar. And if you want it a little thinner, you can always add a little bit of water as well. I want mine a little sweeter, so I'm gonna add a little bit more honey, and I want it a little less salty, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Oh my God, it's perfect. Now for our toppings. Now I think any good salad needs some crunch. In comes ramen noodles on our Asian chicken salad. I don't know about you guys, but I have extra ramen noodles laying around my house all the time, and they are the perfect snack, and I think they make the most amazing salad topping. So, I literally just pulled this out of my pantry, but you can go buy top ramen for like 10 cents at the store, and I'm just gonna pound it with my fist until we get nice little crunchy bits. I like chunks of it, so I'm not gonna completely beat it until they're like little crumbs. I like the kind of crunchy bits like this. And then I'm gonna mix it with some slivered almonds and we're gonna toast these up to get some nice flavor on them. And I swear to you, it makes the most amazing salad topping. Even if it's not an Asian style salad, it's amazing. Over low heat, I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon of sesame seed oil and then sprinkle in my ramen and almond mixture. And we're just gonna toast these in that sesame oil until it becomes fragrant, nice and crispy, about two to three minutes or so. Now to assemble the salad, I have chopped romaine here. I've got my crunchy topping, which is so good and seriously makes the perfect snack. I've got chopped cucumbers, chopped green onions, and then a fresh mandarin orange. You can use the ones from the cans, which are delicious, but obviously this has a little bit less sugar, so that's why I'm going with this option. We've got our fresh dressing, as well as the Morningstar Farms chicken nuggets, which are delicious. Again, I need some sort of crunchy element to my salad, so these are perfect. I just cooked up four of them, which is one serving size. I'm gonna chop them up and we can throw them on the salad. Gonna add my cucumber. Honestly, I'm just gonna dump everything in. Green onions. I love adding green onions to Asian salads because it adds that nice zing, but also it's like a little bit more of a mellow flavor than a raw onion. Obviously, our little mandarin oranges, which just add fun. Beautiful. Our chicken nuggets. Crunchy topping. Maybe a little too much crunchy topping. All right, taste test time. If you're not eating your spoons with a salad, you're doing it wrong because you can scoop up everything in one swift bite. You said you're, you're not eating your spoons. <gasps> no, I didn't. You're lying. It's been a long day. All right, taste test time. If you guys are not eating your salads with a spoon, you're doing it wrong because you can scoop up everything in one delicious bite. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. I didn't realize I was dancing. It makes you want to dance. It's so good. The chicken, chicken, delicious. The flavors pair so well together. Highly recommend making this. This is so good. Last but not least, we are making a delicious broccoli and cheddar Pasta. Now we all love broccoli and cheddar soup. This is amazing. I'm actually pretty sure this might be vegan. So if you're vegan, you're gonna love this one and it comes together so quickly. So let's make it. This is mostly gonna come together in a blender. You can use a food processor if you don't have one. You can use like a handheld blender, immersion blender, whatever you want. So in my blender here, I'm first gonna add one cup of soaked cashews. So I measured out one cup of cashews, put it into my bowl and topped it with warm water and I let them sit for about 20 minutes or so. This is just so they can get nice and softened. And this allows our cashews to blend into a creamy sauce. Now, if you're allergic to cashews, please don't do this or eat this. But if you're not allergic to cashews and you've never tried a cashew cream sauce, I'm about to change your life. I kid you not, I prefer this over regular cream sauces. I think it's so good. Now to our cashews, I'm gonna add in half a cup of nutritional yeast. This is what's going to give it that delicious, cheesy flavor. Sometimes when I'm sad, I just go to the pantry and sniff this because it makes me so happy. If you've never tried nutritional yeast, I know it's a little scary to look at and it sounds a little crazy, but it is delicious. It's got this cheesy flavor. It's super savory. It's amazing on popcorn, in soups, on salads, whatever. And I highly recommend trying it. It adds nice protein to things. It's just so good. Then we're gonna season. We're gonna add salt. Lots of salt. Fresh cracked black pepper. 
Also lots of pepper. And then finally our seasonings are being brought out today. We've got of course our onion powder. I like to add a lot because I feel like the cashews don't really have much flavor. Oh, I didn't mention. These are unsalted, unroasted cashews by the way. Forgot to mention that. And I like to add a lot of garlic powder as well because again, it's not super flavorful with the sauce, so it's really nice to just be able to add whatever you want to it. Of course, some paprika for color and just a little flavor, a little spice, and for a little bit more kick, a little bit of red pepper flakes. I like to also top mine with it, so just a smidge. Pop the top on, put it on top, and then we're gonna have this go nice and low and slow, and while it's going, I'm gonna stream in my vegetable broth. I've got a cup of vegetable broth on me today. Sometimes you need more, sometimes you need less, but I'm just gonna let it go nice and slow and throw it in. Turn up the speed. I like to stop halfway through and go in with a spoon and kind of mix it to help coerce everything together. Oh, it's looking good though. Mm. Thick, creamy sauce. I swear, it's so good every time. Mm. All right, we have our pasta ready here. You can use whatever pasta you'd like. I personally love rigatoni because they are massive and also the ridges hold the sauce really well. You can use penne, linguine, whatever. If you wanna use like a protein, a chickpea pasta, whatever works for you. I just got good old rigatoni and we're gonna pour our sauce on top. Oh my God, it's so luscious and cheesy. I like a lot of sauce, so I'm gonna pour it all on top. We're gonna mix it all together. Now you can always leave it like this if you want, but for a little extra health, I have some steamed chopped broccoli here. This is gonna give it that broccoli cheddar feel, obviously. I just chopped it into little baby bite-sized pieces. I love the vibrance of the green, too, that it adds. We're just gonna mix it all up in with the sauce. So much pasta. Little topping, a little more nutritional yeast on top, and for a little more kick, red pepper flakes. And there we've got vegan broccoli cheddar pasta. I have to do this taste test because I never say no to pasta. I'm very full from all of our foods today, though. Mmm. Mmm. Awesome. <laughs> I just stuck with my mouth full. Mmm. It's almost got like a like an autumnal feel. It's like kind of like warm and spicy. So good. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to Morningstar Farms for sponsoring. This was so fun. If you try any of the recipes, let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.